So I'm reading this book, The Righteous Mind, by Jonathan Haidt. And he does some studies on moral intuitions that are actually very illuminating. Some of the confusion that comes up when we have discussions about morality as objective or subjective. Some of the thing that leads to confusion is that there are some moral decisions, so, or at least some decisions that can be made that we put into the category of moral decisions, that in fact aren't. There's no moral fact involved. They are more than likely subjective. Not everything falls into the category of there is a moral truth involved. Some things, you know, whether, whether there is a black and white moral, a correct right or wrong, I, it may not be. Let's take, for example, just the, the, the first thing I can think of is getting a tattoo. Getting a tattoo is something that is prescribed by the Bible. Now, there are people who tell you that is morally wrong. It's morally wrong. Don't you dare get a tattoo. Why not? It's morally wrong. It's evil. But why? There's no real objective reason that you could think of why it would be morally wrong. Now, you may experience moral revulsion. Here's where the book, the, uh, the, um, here's where the book comes into play. Because he does studies on how people process their morality, and he comes to a very interesting conclusion. There's a thing that happens that he theorizes called a moral intuition, a hunch, something that strikes you. And, and, and how he did a study on it, it's generally, it's in, his, in his studies, they tell you a story, and a person will experience some form of revulsion. Now, that person will subjectively experience that revulse, that feeling of revulsion as a moral intuition. Here's where it starts getting really interesting and complicated because that feeling isn't necessarily a moral intuition just because the person experiences that. What do I mean? Well, okay, in the book he tells people a story. And those stories generally produce some form of revulsion in the person. One example he comes up with is having sex with a chicken. Uh, probably the better example is when a brother and a sister go to a room somewhere and they have sex. Ugh, yeah, that's exactly what you said. Ugh, ugh, oh, ugh, gnarly. Ah, morally disgusting. They have sex, but they protect themselves so no pregnancy occurs. Now, there's a lot of people who experience that immediately. A, a feeling of moral revulsion over that. But then they don't necessarily know why. Now, his second conclusion is that people then justify their moral position that they experience intuitively. They intuitively go, ah, something about that just rubs me wrong, man. Ew. But then they justify it after the fact. So they start looking for reasons as to why that is actually wrong, objectively speaking. Because they can't just kind of let it feel wrong. It feels just wrong. Now that is a very, very interesting thing. Because what you are actually dealing with in those circumstances is cultural conditioning usually. Not actual moral revulsion. Actual moral revulsion does take place when you start getting to really, really deep moral crimes. or deep. Most of us... If you're a, a reasonable, sane human being listening to this, if you saw somebody harm a child in a way where the child cried out in pain, you would be morally revulsed. Morally. You'd be like, ah! And you'd, you'd feel disgust and you'd feel righteous anger and you'd feel all sorts of feelings. That would be moral in nature. Now, you take something relatively benign or potentially benign or harmless. Let's leave aside the... the brother having sex with his sister. Let's, let's do another example where it could potentially just be cultural conditioning. Let's take cursing in movies. Cursing in movies? <gasps> it's awful! If you're a Christian, you know, th this is where Christians and I usually part ways, even though I'm tech I, I am one of them. I was raised completely and utterly in the world. I was raised completely secular. So, you know, one t the first time I became a Christian, guy came up to me and said, you know, you know these movies have all these curses in it. <laughs> who the f who, I didn't say actually who the f cares, but I almost did. Like who the f cares about cursing in movies? Man, what a dark! What the what the f is wrong with you? What the f is what the frick is wrong with you, Holmes? I could care. I could give the flyingest fig about cursing in movies. Honestly, I'll go to because of how I was raised. I'll go see a movie and you know 
a Christian would be like, I can't believe all the cursing. I'd be like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> Was there? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I didn't notice. I actually won't notice it because of how I was raised. Cultural conditioning. Is it immoral? Eh, depend, I, I guess. I guess if it reaches a certain level. Violence in the movie, same idea. Movie's got to be really, really, really off the wall, psycho crazy for me to really be, you know, I have a really high threshold for psycho movies. You know, when I was a teenager, 7th and 8th grade, I'd go see stuff like Halloween or Friday the 13th Part 2 in the movie theater. And me and my friends, we'd laugh at the, the, the sickest parts of the movie. Ah, that was part of the fun. You know, there's some crazy death and everyone's like, oh, duh, you know. It was kind of like a party on a Friday night. So I don't experience those things the same way somebody who was raised differently. They will have an experience of moral revulsion that I was not trained to have. Now, is there some form of moral wrong involved? Potentially. But you see how it starts to get really sketchy and subjective. Very subjective. Where does the line get crossed where something actually becomes immoral by virtue of the fact that, like, you know, it's got too many F-bombs in it? You know, it's a Martin Scorsese flick with too many murders. <laughs> when does it actually cross the threshold into the immoral? Tough to say. If you've been raised the way I am, you barely know it. You know, I'll go see study like uh, Quentin Tarantino films. And the person will come out to, you know, that movie was so violent. I'm like, it was? Oh, oh yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> I didn't really notice. You know, it's, it's just you, you raise a certain way, you barely experience it. So... Where am I going with this? Well, this underscores what he is talking about. In life, you have something known as a moral intuition. You go see a movie with too much violence in it. Now, if you're raised a certain way, you might experience that too much violence really quickly. You know, someone gets hurt, my wife can't take any violence movies. Someone starts getting punched. She's like, ooh, 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 you know, starts wincing. She experiences a form of moral revulsion. Then you go a step further and you try and justify your experience of moral revulsion. You try and give voice to it. You try and, you try and uh, make it something objective. And this is where it starts to get really confusing and really complicated because it might not necessarily be an objective moral fact. You can experience moral revulsion just based on training. If you don't believe me, go to some freaky country and try to eat their food. Something that seems perfectly palatable and delicious to them will strike you as disgusting. It happens all the time. And this is where things that we actually classify as morals might not be. Now, you can make a case that cursing in movies has some real moral import. And you can make a case that certainly you can make a very good case that violence in movie has, has some moral import. But it becomes harder to do with something like a tattoo. Well, how is a tattoo harming anybody? If you put a tattoo on your body, no, nobody else need to even experience it. You could put it on the back of your leg. Nobody even knows you have it. How could there be a moral wrong being committed at all? Now, you might be able to make a case for it too, but you're starting to stretch things because of your subjective experience. Do you see where it gets confusing? There is a certain amount of moral revulsion that is subjective. It is training, period. It is how you're raised. It would take me a lot of violence in a movie for me to even notice. The movie has to be really, really freaking out there sick before I start to notice it as sick. My wife will notice it immediately, how we were raised subjective experience so that's where it gets complicated it's worth thinking about that's all i'm just putting it out there food for thought that's all you don't have to you don't have to come to any conclusions right now you know just throwing it out there for your consumption amen